Welcome back to Talk A Good Game, where for the next few minutes we're going to be talking about fitness. I am delighted to say that on the sofa here, on the mellow yellow sofa, we have Ian Entwistle, personal trainer. Ian, tell me a little bit about how you got into, into the fitness regime, as it were. Yeah, well, I suppose I've always exercised, having had a, um, played sport as a child and, and growing up, spending a lot of years doing martial arts. But um, formally, my education was in healthcare, really. I was a radiographer and uh, followed up with ultrasound. I used to do ultrasound scans on people. Moved into fitness more professionally in the last sort of six, seven years, really. So, as a professional now, as it were, how are we? Are we are we any fitter than we used to be? Are we worse than we used to be? Well, you've got. I think probably there's a, there's a gap developing. Some people at the top are probably fitter, but as a as a rule, we're getting worse. Really, people are becoming obesity levels are rising, even though we apparently know more than we probably ever have done. And is that worse? with children I mean are we seeing a lot more you know problems we keep seeing is at school and school meals and all that sort of stuff and and all the sort of sugary drinks and and, and aimed at children is that is that the problem area? absolutely um, there's there's lots of evidence to suggest that obese or overweight children uh, turn into overweight adults and it's very very difficult if you're in that cycle of being overweight as a child to 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 break that cycle and, and become a become a, a normal weight as an adult um, so yeah that is a big issue but with the population generally uh, obesity levels are, are rising I mean we hear it constantly don't we in the news about it even though like I said we should or we believe we know more than we've ever done and I suppose it's because the foods that are bad for us we like, don't we? Exactly. I mean, we like donuts. We like cream cakes. We like, yeah. <laughs> you know, soda pops. We yeah. don't necessarily like full sort of carrot smoothies. No, exactly. I mean, it's 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 not a coincidence that the food we likes the food we like are made that way. Mm. So, like you said, things like donuts full of fat and sugar, um, everything, ice cream, fat and sugar. It's the things that, as human beings, we we go for. We we like, as a rule, fat, sweet, and salt. And so therefore the food manufacturers are well aware of this and, and, and tailor this food to make it so that, so that we're attracted to it. So it's keying into inbuilt things in us that, uh, that, that make us attracted to this kind of food, which ultimately we're, we're over consuming it by, by massive amounts and it's not doing us any, any favors. If only there was a switch we could just click and, and say, right, today I don't like sugar and Yeah, fat. I mean, we all have a sweet tooth, don't we? I mean, yeah. everyone loves, it's, it's the problem, the problem arises is these things are, effectively nutritionally void so that they're what we call energy dense so they've got they've got lots and lots of energy in them but not not much of anything else so no nutrients are things that we need so so we we it's it's most people find it quite difficult to just have the one biscuit or the one scoop of ice yeah. cream you know what i mean um, you look at a man who can't eat just one and, and 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 this is a common thing most people struggle in just eating one and and, and therein lies your problem but this food is made for us to feel that way about it so what, what can you, how can we educate ourselves? And it's just us educating the brain, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's confused. There's a lot of information out there. Like I said, we, we know more than we've ever done. It's, there's a lot of research taking place. The, what it comes down to for most people is it's keeping it as natural as possible. So if you're going to have one rule, probably, is to avoid as much processed food as you can. Uh, this is where it starts to get. If you start looking into the minor details of, of what's in something, as a rule, food it's not got a list of ingredients, it is the ingredient. Mm. And that's where, that's where we go wrong because we have food with countless lists of ingredients, half of which we can't pronounce. And, um, and, and, and that's, that's, the, that's the biggest issue we're faced with. People are, people are over consuming these highly manufactured, highly processed foods. I mean, some of the processed foods used to be worse than they are now, didn't they? They used to be full of E numbers and preservatives and a horrible sort of other chemicals. Yeah. But they're still not great for us, is what you're saying. No, no. I mean, we, we, we've, we've gotten on top of things like trans fats, which, which we, we've, we've become more aware that they're, they're, they're not good. And most people agree that, that they're bad for us. So people are starting to make a point of, of removing those from the foods. Uh, but there's, there's, there's still such a long way to go. I mean, you know, the, the, you get these issues from, there, there was a culture of, of, of low fat being the thing to do and, and, and fat being identified as being bad, which was a, which was a mistake because it's caused manufacturers to, to, to remove the fat from food so they can say it's low fat. Now, if you remove fat from something that would otherwise have it in, it will taste horrible. Mm. It'll taste like cardboard. So to combat that, they've then added sugar. And so now we're in a situation where you've got lots of sugar in things. So it might be labelled low fat, doesn't mean it's good for you. Well, sugar's the new evil, isn't it? Well, it's, it's, um, it's so prevalent. It's, it's, it's in so many things. And I mean, there's almost nothing that you can't add sugar to that 
sugar doesn't make it taste nicer. So this is your issue: is that if you, if you, like I said, we're over-consuming these things, and, and, and the, the amounts are getting are, are so big that um, we, you know it's, it's almost impossible for someone to to, to maintain a, a healthy weight if they are eating these processed foods. It doesn't help, I suppose, with manufacturers putting part of your five a day on the side of a tin of hula hoops or, or whatever yeah, it might yeah, be, or yeah, pasta yeah, hoops, or yeah, not hula hoops, yeah. but pasta hoops. Yeah, exactly. And and this is. This is another issue with 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 when we try to we try to follow certain rules. Like I say, if you if you keep it straightforward and, and try and be as natural as possible, you you circumvent all this all these. Should I be having five of these a day? Um, with your five a day, that that's a prime example of of you know, like you said, it'll be on the side of a, a tin of pasta hoops. Mm. So that can't possibly be you know the intention is to is to eat what five cans of these a day, and you've satisfied your your requirements. It, it's trying to make things straightforward that aren't necessarily, and so you know you could have five bananas, and that's part of your five a day. Not the idea, really. What you should be doing is eating, you know, balanced diet containing vegetables and fruit, but predominantly vegetables is what we need to be eating. Okay, so let's say we've, we've, we're getting ourselves together with what we eat. Mm. Now, what about um, just getting fitter? Because there are lots of, um, I mean, I see so many more people out cycling and, and you know, the, the Tour de Yorkshire's coming up, yeah. of course. Um, we had the Grand Depart in Yorkshire, which is a massive boost for cycling. Yeah. It's a huge growth area. Yeah. Uh, everybody was playing golf, all those sort of, you know, execs yeah. are now cycling instead. That's got to be a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, I, th I mean, I think, uh, like I said, as a, without getting t into too much detail about it, just people moving is, is good, like I say. Sort the diet out, eat a balanced diet, protein, you know, veg, meat, everything like that. Get that sorted out and then and then move. You know, ultimately, if you want to, I think a lot of people would benefit from, from doing more of what we call resistance works or building muscle, not necessarily turning into a bodybuilder, but building muscle, which has, which has you know, tremendous benefits, um, and, and moving generally. Again, not getting too bogged down with, with what is the optimum way to be, but, but just generally moving. We're too sedentary. You know, there's, mm. there's, there's, there's different issues. As part from not doing any exercise, there are different issues from people being stationary for so long in a day. So many people who are, who are trapped behind a desk, you know, this is a problem. There's, there's, many, there's many issues linked to that by itself. So not just the lack of exercise, but the lack of any kind of any movement from, from behind a desk. And people who have that problem often look for shortcuts. And we come to the new fads and gimmicks and fat burning pills you yeah. can buy on the Internet. I mean, should we, what's your opinion on all that? Uh, it's, it's a massive mistake in my mind. So anything, anything. Why? Why the, well, these so? things are the, the labelled supplements, aren't they? And and that, that's the important word to remember is that these these aren't a replacement. So fat burners are a slightly different issue. But even supplements to the food, if you if you're eating a good, nutritious, balanced diet, the the, the need for supplements should be should be should be less. Um, things like fat burners and, like I said, going for the shortcuts, trying to trying to do things that way around, it, it will lead to issues in the end. It, it's not how we're naturally made to be. What does a fat burner do? I mean, what what's in that? What what you know, how's that going to affect your body? Is it going to you know raise the temperature? What's it going to do? And it puts and, it under stress, doesn't it? I mean, it's just the th the problem being is you're not 100 percent sure of, of, of what is going to happen and why. If what is the, what's the idea? Is it is it to be a certain way by next week? Or are we looking to make an alteration so that so, so that we're good for ever, for however long? And and that's the the problem I think most people have is that we're looking too short in the future, and we need to we need to be looking at making a change and concentrating on doing the right things, and everything else will take care of itself. Your weight, your appearance, will will sort that out rather than concentrating on thinking I have to be this weight on the scales, I have to look like this. Just take care of the doing what we said, move around, eat the natural foods, and the rest of it will take care of itself. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> so well, basically, decent food, move a bit, and you you too can look like this. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just and like I said, balanced diet. You know, uh, protein, fat, mm. veg. Uh, you know, get your nutrients in. People are people are fat phobic. Fat's not the end of the world. Fat's not terrible. You've just got to be in the, the the right things. Again, not these fake manufactured foods. You know, limiting the sugar. Uh, again, in the when you you'll do that by avoiding processed foods um, and then moving around in whatever that may be. It's something that you enjoy. Don't make it a slug. Yeah, because you never do it again. No, you? exactly. Ian, so many thanks for coming onto the You're sofa. Welcome. We've been sat down for too long. <laughs> 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 Get Should have been doing down. something. Yeah, but lovely to have you here anyway. Thanks. So 